Ladies and gentlemen, boys and gender non-binaries, welcome to the Spearhead, uh, whenever I feel like doing it, really, podcast. <laughs> and you're lucky I'm even uploading it. No, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I know. And I know I did this last episode as well. Uh, the, yeah, it's late. Uh, I've been really fucking sick, man. Like, I've been crazy sick and just swamped with the tour, and and this whole week we did survey break on radio, so I was like, getting on planes, getting on stage, getting on a plane, coming back to Melbourne, going straight into radio, and we were on from 10pm until midnight, every fucking night, and when I was supposed to be having a break from that, I was getting on a plane, getting on stage, getting on a plane. So, uh, I just was like, you know what, if I do a podcast, it's gonna be shit, and it'll make me even sicker. And I think you can probably even tell I'm still a little bit sick. Um, but uh, I'm on the mend uh, and survey breaks over. So it's back to once a week radio stuff. So uh, should be fine uh, with the podcast uh, going forward. Although I do know that I said that last week. So hey man, not promising anything. How you cunts been? You been alright? Uh, I'm uploading this one on a fucking, what? It's tonight, Wednesday night. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit late, isn't it? Um... But I've been I've been good, man. I've just been really fucking enjoying this tour and uh, loving being on radio every day. Sadly, that is now finished again. I feel like, man, our show and me and Luke talk about this all the time. Our show needs to be a daily show because it's that's just how it works. And our ideas always like unfold and get deeper, and and we always get obsessed with dumb shit. But when you're on once a week, it's so like. It's so, like, not permanent. Like, you talk about this, and then it's gone. You talk about that, and then it's gone the next week. And there's no, like, continuing arc. We love arcs and stories and returning to shit. And you can't really do that with a, with a weekly show. So, hopefully next year, uh, we're going to try and get something more, uh, more frequent. Uh, but, you know, uh, we're at, like, uh, like I said, we're at the point now where the next step for us means that someone probably has to lose their job. So, that's, like, next level fucking... Shit, it's like, oh man, these guys are good, but are they better than these guys? And, you know, all that contract negotiation bullshit that I'm not smart enough to understand. So I'm just trying to make some good radio and fucking hopefully we'll get somewhere with it. But it's all a bit of fun. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> man, uh, thank you to everyone who came out to the Canberra show and uh, Tasmania as well. I don't, I can't remember if I've done a podcast since Tassie. I may have. Um, man, I want to tell you a secret. I'm going to tell you a secret about this show. Uh, before I started, like, the first show, uh, and about three weeks before I started the tour, I was uh, almost 100% convinced that it was going to suck compared to the comedy special. Because I was like, fuck, the comedy special I spent four years on, and this show I spent one year on, and I didn't get to perform as much as I would have liked because of radio and, and fulfilling the rewards of the special and all like it, my life was destroyed for 18 months from the moment we started the insane independent comedy special route um i don't know what i was thinking you know what you know what i was thinking i didn't know how hard it would be and now i know how hard it would be i'm like i am never doing that again no way that was fucking dumb that's impossible man but i did it uh thanks to you cunts um and I'm very grateful for how well it went and everything. But yeah, it, it destroyed my life. Um, and I feel like I'm just coming out of the fog now. But yeah, before this tour started and when I finished writing the show and I was about to get on stage, I was like, oh no, this is going to be bad. This is going to suck. Uh, and then like fucking 10 minutes into the first show, I was like, oh no, this is really good. Like this is fucking up there with the special. And that's what people have been telling me after the show which is great to hear because I mean I was I was so convinced that it wouldn't live up to it but people are telling some people are telling me that it's better I don't know if I agree but you know I don't know man I just I just think like I'm a better comedian and I read and and this whole feeling of like before I start a tour thinking that the show's going to suck is is familiar like I did it last year with try and stop me I remember the first show the last thing I walked I the last thing I was reading through my notes I type out the whole show in like uh, across like 15 pages and 
when I don't know it back to front in the first like five or so shows when I'm when I'm getting the order of, of all the jokes and everything, I flick through the notes uh, backstage just so I can remember little punchlines and this and that. And uh, I remember the last thing I thought before going on stage again to Geelong with, with the Try and Stop Me tour, the last thing I thought was, it was like, welcome to the stage, Lewis Spears. And I thought, this is going to suck. <laughs> and it went amazing. And it went, it was like, one of the better shows of the tour, but I, I distinctly remember walking on stage while I was like, the, while I was, while I had my foot on the stage, I was thinking, this is going to suck. And, uh, and it didn't. And, and I, I thought the same thing with this tour and it, it did not suck. It was really good. And it has been all, all the shows so far have been great. I mean, uh, you know, still hanging out for that one tank, <laughs> but, uh, hopefully it doesn't come. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, that's weird. I thought the same thing last year. And then I read something on Twitter by an author that I like. I forget their name. I can't remember who wrote it. Um, but it just really struck this fucking chord with me where it was the tweet said something along the lines of, uh, I've been, they'd been doing it for 20 years. And they were like, I've been writing books for 20 years, so I know my creative process very, very well now. You know, I've written this many books, I've been doing it for this long, blah, blah, blah. And uh, feelings, I've come to identify feelings of this book isn't good enough when it's almost done or when it's two thirds of the way done. When I almost finish a book, I always have this thought, this is, this sucks and it's not as good as the last one and it's not good and I should scrap it. And I've come to realize that that those thoughts are actually not exactly true. That they're actually just part of my creative process. And it's not a positive part of it. It's not, but it's a part of the process that happens with every book. So now that, you know, when I get two thirds through a book, and I start to feel this way, I can realize, oh no, I feel like this because I always feel like this at this stage of the project. This is just the normal way that I feel when I'm at this point of the project. And that fucking blew my mind because I I made me realize I'm this, I do the same shit, but just like a week before I get on stage. We're like, I'm, I'm so amped up. I'm like, this is going to be the best show ever. It's so fucking good. I've been performing all year, perfecting it, crafting it. And then I put it all together. And then a couple days before I go on stage, I look at everything and I go, oh no, this is bad. It's not good. Fuck, they're going to hate it. And, 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 and now I'm like, oh no, that's, that's just how I write the show. I write it. I think it's really good. And then I go, oh fuck, it sucks. And then I go on stage and it's good. Or at least that's how it has been for my last four shows. I think the comedy special was the only show that I stepped on stage going, this is going to be fucking amazing. But really, that wasn't a new show. It was just an amalgamation of the last three that I did. So I guess I had that previous knowledge of, oh, this all works. I know, it was really interesting. So I guess it's like, sometimes if you think you're, you're fucking shit, maybe that's just part of the process. I don't know. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just shitting on, dude. Uh, what do I want to talk about here? I had something here. Um. Oh, bro, you you fucking. You guys see on on Instagram that that little podcast clip that I posted of me trashing uh, Android phones. <clears throat> um. Where are we? On my fucking... Yeah, the Lewis Spears on Android phones. I posted that and that went actually quite really well. I'm going to try and chuck up like maybe an Instagram clip a week on on here from the podcast just to get more people listening to it. Um, and all of these comments... It's from the last episode. I basically just said, Hey, Android, it doesn't matter how good their, their physical specs are. Software doesn't speak to it properly. So it just ends up being shit. And it's... And it's like, it doesn't matter how good on paper it is, in practicality, it's fucking shithouse next to iPhones, even though iPhones are overpriced. And all of these comments from angry Android people just said what I said in a, in a paragraph. Like, they were just saying what I was saying in a paragraph. Um, like, there was this cunt. He goes, oh, 
If selfies or just photos are taken in an app like Snapchat or Instagram, they'll look like dog shit. This is because it would be completely impossible to support each Android phone's camera. So instead, the, ba the app basically screenshots the viewfinder resulting in a lower quality photo that has not actually come from the camera. And it's like, yeah, dude, that's what I'm saying. Your fucking phone sucks, man. If you want to use it for any kind of social media or if you want to use it like a phone, your phone sucks, man. Okay, cool. You've got RuneScape on it, and I don't yet. Great. I'll, I'll just pay RuneScape on my PC like it fucking should be. It's like... All these people were... <laughs> all these people were fucking... So angry. What was this one? There was another one that I found. Hey guys, welcome back to the Speared Sundays podcast where I just scroll through my fucking phone so I can read comments that make me angry. Um, <laughs> man, there was another one, I swear. Um, you know what, guys? I feel like that, that this is getting to be quite uninteresting. You know what, guys? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Go and have a look at the fucking comments. It's so full of just angry Android people. And it just makes me... It just it just fills my heart with joy making cunts mad. Dude, um, I've been... What have I been doing? Oh, man. I So we've been traveling. So it's the biggest team that we travel with so far. So it's me, uh, Greeley, the opening act, uh, our tour, the tour manager, Adam, and Bree, the photographer. And uh, it's like... I love everything about them, except except the photographer has the fucking McDonald's app. You know, McDonald's are doing that Monopoly bullshit at the moment, where you buy a fucking thing from Macca's and then you tear off the the thing, and then you win a you win some fries, and then everyone tricks themselves into thinking, "Oh, I'm gonna win a car," and like you, you have to collect three different green stickers or whatever and they make like 75 million copies of the first two cards and then they make one of the third one so that everyone has two and they're like fuck all I gotta do is get that other one when in really reality that other one just got chucked in a bin like fucking eight months ago by some mum who didn't give a fuck about the game or some person who doesn't speak English so they're like fuck it I don't want to play this game I can't even read the box into the bin it goes and that's that's the fucking shithouse family vehicle they're giving away you ever notice that? Every fucking car giving away, give every car being given away is it's just shit. Have you ever seen a good car getting given away as a prize? No, never. You in the, you're in the fucking shopping center, and what do they park in the middle of it? Something that looks like an SUV. If it was, if it got hit in the head when it was like born, it was like, ah, oh, you're gonna grow up to be a cool car. Then the doctor dropped it. Oh, ha! Ah! Congratulations, it's disabled. You know those fucking cars? Where do they come from? Who makes those decisions of what the cars they're supposed to give away? Because they're always like worth heaps of money too. That's what gets me. It's like, oh, if you're going to give away a $60,000 car, give away a Mustang or something cool. You could get like, you know, I don't know, the, an entry level Audi at least would be cooler than the fucking oppo of cars that you're selling or giving away for free. In a raffle that no one's going to win. So anyway, this is the thing. I didn't know this about the fucking Maccas thing because I don't play that game. I'm like, yeah, I want chips. I don't want a car. Fuck off, all right? 24, don't have a car. I'll buy one myself. Thank you very much. That's why I'm doing this tour. So I can get myself a fucking $3,000 death trap. Drive it into a wall because i got no brakes. That's what I want to do. I don't want you... Disabled SUV, all right. Get out of my, get it out of my shopping center. Put a stall there that that's pretending to be a shop but isn't actually a shop, all right. I want to see some cunts selling wooden toys that nobody wants to buy. I don't want to see that shit house SUV. I don't care how many kids you're going to save from cancer with your raffle tickets. I don't want the car. Get it out of the shopping center. <laughs> um, what am I saying? Oh, yeah, so the, the fucking Macca's raffle thing, right? So I saw she had the McDonald's Monopoly app on her phone, right? 
and she got one of the chance cards. So what she does is she scans the chance card with the McDonald's app. Firstly, I don't want a McDonald's app on my phone, all right? I might as well just invite o- obesity in the front door. It's like, yeah, I, f- I swear, man, if you put if you put the McDonald's app on your phone, you've given up on life. Like, that's, like, how much... I, I feel like my phone is like my bedroom. It's my house. And I'm only going to let a select few people into my fucking front door. And it's definitely not going to be McDonald's. If you download the McDonald's app on your phone, what are you doing with your life? Anyone with the McDonald's app on their phone hasn't read a book in 36 months. No way. Here's something you'll never hear. Man, I just read this really good book. Oh, hang on. I need to scan my Monopoly chance card on the McDonald's app. I bet. Hey, if you got the McDonald's app on your phone, I want you to take a photo of your bookshelf. (laughs) Because I know that you've probably got... You've probably got three Harry Potter books. You've got, like, the first Twilight book that you read half of and then didn't finish the trilogy. And then you have 30 second, 37 fucking rolled Dahl books that you read when you were nine. And then you downloaded the McDonald's app and that was it. No more reading. That was it. If you have the McDonald's app on your phone, you don't read. Fact. Sorry, that's just the truth. The, put the, putting the McDonald's app. Who the fuck? Down, I'm so mad. Why am I mad about... You know what? The only thing worse than downloading the McDonald's app would be like downloading the Aldi app. Do they... (laughs) Oh, man. Does Aldi even have an app? I'm going to have a look. Fuck. You know what? Any bets they do. So many people have... Fuck. Who downloads apps like at all? Like I'll download a game every now and then. But apps? Like after you've got all the social media. I can't even find my fucking app store. Oh, there it is. Like, who downloads apps? You know what I mean? Like, oh, fuck, I must get this app. It's going to be so useful to my life. Once you have all the social media things, like, you don't need anything else. Aldi. If they have an Aldi app, I'm going to throw my phone in the bin. They've got an Aldi. My phone's in the bin. Aldi have an app. I've put my phone in the bin. I'm going back to a Nokia, all right? Because there's no fucking... What kind of person downloads the Aldi app? It's like, oh, I've got bored of the McDonald's app. I might as well download the fucking Aldi app. Dude, that's when... If you if if a McDonald's app means you can't read, if you download the Aldi app, you never went to school. <laughs> like, the people with the Aldi app, you know those are the type of people who, like, post massive six-paragraph poorly spelled... Facebook rants about their ex-partner. Even though they've got like a 13-year-old son who's definitely reading it. That's the type of person who has an Aldi app on their phone. Oh, me happy Mother's Day to me fucking dog cunt missus. All the fucking dog cunt missuses who keep kids away from their fathers with the dirty grubby court systems. Happy Mother's Day to all you bitches. Hashtag... Fuck mums. <laughs> that's the that's the person with the Aldi app on their phone. Um, why am I talking about Aldi? Oh yeah, right. So anyway, my photographer has the 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 Macca's app on her phone, so she doesn't read. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll, you're great. Although I haven't seen you read. All right. So she's, I, I was watching her do this. She took the fucking, uh, the, the fucking chance sticker off her fries, right? First of all, who gets McDonald's at the airport? Of all the things you can get at the airport, I'd rather starve, right? Oh, I'm at the airport. Beauty. I'm going to get a large fries. No, I don't, like, I don't want to shit myself in like 15,000 meters up. Don't need that in my life. But anyway, whatever. It's not my body. She gets the... The chance card, and she scans it with the McDonald's app, right? And and here's what it should do, right? If you scan your chance card with the McDonald's app, what it should do is say, Hey, 
you have won this, or hey, you have not won this. That's all. That's all it has to do. But instead, what it does is it comes up with this fuck-off shit animation with the Monopoly man standing on top of some McDonald's store, and then text pops up and says, to reveal whether or not you have won, blow on your phone. And then I'm sitting there in the airport watching this woman blow on her phone in public. (sighs) And the app's not moving. So she's fucking blowing as hard as she can. She's about to pass out, blowing on her phone for the chance to win a medium fries. That's the saddest shit I've ever seen at the airport. Bro, I would rather blow a man than blow my phone. For a large fries. Straight up. Middle of the food court airport. I would rather blow a man than blow my phone. You put that on my tombstone. Here lies Lewis Spears. He'd rather blow a man in the airport food court than blow on his iPhone for a medium fries. Fuck off, Maccas, with your Monopoly garbage. Either tell me that I've won... Or don't tell me to blow my phone. (laughs) Why does that shit make me angry? That doesn't affect me at all. I wasn't even doing that. Like if I was like, oh man, I'd love to win the chips. And then I had to, I didn't even do it. That didn't affect me at all. I just saw someone else doing it. Living their life. Having a nice time blowing on their phone. And that that ruined my day. That almost ruined the whole show. I thought about that the whole way to Canberra. Fucking Monopoly. Want me to blow on my phone. But they don't. I don't have the app. They don't want me to blow on my phone. Man. That's what my app's going to be. It's Like, that's all it's going to do. <laughs> it's not going to... It's not going to have any exclusive content. It's not going to have any discount codes for tickets. It's not going to have any live stream capabilities. No behind the scenes info. No podcast shit. Nothing. It's going to be the Lewis Spears app. And you it, you got to download it. And it's like, it's like big. It's a big app. Like it's 12 gigs. Like 12. You got to sit overnight at home connected to Wi-Fi to download my app. 12 gigs, and it only comes out on Android, right, with all your pixelated cameras, just to fuck with all the iPhone cunts who think they're superior, I'm only releasing this app on Android, and it takes 12 gigs on your fucking Oppo, or your Huawei, or your fucking whatever, the, whatever you, you, you fuck, your fucking whatever you fuck, <laughs> fuck for an English podcast, I don't say much of it. Right? This is what my app does. 12 gigs. You've got to download it for six hours on Wi-Fi while you're asleep. It almost destroys your phone. Takes up all your space. Slows the fuck out of your phone down. You try and open up anything and it's just like slow motion shit. And then you open up the Lewis Spears app and all it is, is like, it just asks you to blow your phone. And so you blow it and it does... Nothing. (laughs) Nothing. Doesn't do anything. 12 gigs, blow the phone, that's all it does. And you know what? $2.99. US. (laughs) Oh, fuck. How long are we going for? 23 minutes. All right. What else do I want to talk about? Man, I saw this um I saw this this thing in Canberra. It seems like oh, but before I get into it, I want to let everybody know that I'm going to be in uh Adelaide on Friday. Uh there's still some tickets available. That is this Friday, so in a couple of days, and then I'm going to be in Perth on Sunday. That show sold out, but we've added another one for Monday night. So Perth people, come to the Monday night show. I would love to see you there. Uh, It's going to be a smaller show because it's uh, more intimate, which will be great fun. So I'll get to spend more time with everyone after I meet you. 
Uh, and that'll be great. So Adelaide has tickets, Perth has tickets, uh, and I'm really looking forward to them. It's, uh, it's up to the major cities now, so the shows are starting to get bigger, uh, and, and as, as the more I do the show, the better it does get. Uh, and now I'm no longer walking on stage going, it's going to suck! Now I'm like, ah, I reckon I can make this even better than last night, which is cool. Um, oh, and uh, special note to Adelaide people, I'm having a special guest open for me, uh, Lachlan Fairbarn from Fairbarn Films is going to be opening up the show, as well as Greeley. So it'll be Greeley and Lachlan. Lachlan's going to be going to be doing about seven or ten minutes of uh, material. And uh, from what I hear, he's been hustling. I think he opened for Luke Kidgel, and Luke said he was really, really good. That was last... I think that was last year, so he'd be even fucking better now. And Lachlan's just finished... I believe he's just finished his tour, so... He's got a lot of stage time under his belt, and I'm really looking. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing his stuff. I haven't seen it yet. I've seen his stuff with his brother, but I haven't seen his solo stand up. So I'm really psyched to see it as well. And that'll be in Adelaide. Um, and I don't know. He might wait around. I don't know. It's up to him. He probably will. Um, if you want to meet him as well. So Adelaide's gonna be cool. And I think that uh, Sydney. I'm gonna try and have some special guests as well as my regular opener, Greeley. Uh, but we'll see. Depends how busy all the all the other cunts are. <clears throat> um, oh, and Brisbane, very special uh, thing for you guys to know. I am filming the show. So that's the biggest show of the tour. There's still a few tickets available. Please do come. I feel really good about this Brisbane show. It's fucking huge, and I would really love to fill it out. So if you're from Brisbane, if you've seen me before, it's a brand new show. It's really fucking good, and uh, we're filming it. So if you... It's not... Yeah, if you want to... I don't know, be in the audience of a filmed Lewis Spears show and you might see the back of your head somewhere uh, in the future. That'd be uh, really cool. So come to that, please, Brisbane, uh, Adelaide, Perth. And uh, I've added another one in Melbourne as well. Uh, and that one's, the Melbourne one's getting close to sold out as well. Um, so that's all my plugging. Sorry about all the fucking plugs. I've been doing way too much shit recently, haven't I? Um, where are we? Dude, you hear about this? I'm going to do a video on it. I'm going to try and get that up tomorrow. I'm going to film it today. You hear about that uh, fucking uh, university in England that's banned clapping? Like, they've banned clapping to help students with anxiety. They've banned something that you will just definitely encounter. It's like banning chewing. Or banning saying hello. Like, like banning such an integral body language thing that, that humans universally do across the planet. They're banning it in this university because probably six people get a bit, Ugh, when they hear clapping. Like, who the fuck actually gets anxiety when they hear clapping? And how are you going to protect people from that? Like... Dude, if, if a student came to me and was like, oh, I'm scared of clapping, I'd be like, okay, let's figure out how we can make you not scared of clapping or at least help you deal with your phobia of clapping. Rather than, oh, you're scared of clapping? Great. I'm going to stop a thousand people from clapping just to protect you. It's fucking insane, man. I don't know... Could you imagine spending like $60,000 a year and then getting treated like a fucking idiot who can't handle clapping? I'd move unis. I'd be like, oh, cool. I'm here to learn science and you're telling me that I can't clap. Great. See you later. <laughs> right. You could, if you were fucking... Dude, if you were scared of clapping, you'd hate porn. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> You, like, like, you couldn't watch it. It'd be too fucking, oh, I'm getting anxiety. Fuck, man. <laughs> Can you guys, like, fuck, but without, but without, like, t like, don't go balls deep. Just fuck without, like, do you want me to plank? Yeah, it's just when you go like that, it, like, gives me anxiety. So can you just, like, just you, like, I know you got nine inches, but can you just use, like, four and a half? <laughs> just because, I don't know, when I hear, I freak out.
fuck. You'd hate you'd hate trap too. Every time you hear a fucking trap beat with a good clap in it, you just fucking shit yourself. Ah! It's just like pouring all over again! Fuck. So I think I'm going to do a video about that. I want to do more, more of those like spontaneous videos because I haven't been posting anything like for Facebook. My channel's been doing really, really, really well. I've been weekly for, for two months and that's like actually picking up. My channel been stagnating for a little bit. I'm like, Ugh, why isn't my channel growing? I'm not going to upload videos though. Dickhead. Um, but that's all coming about. That's all going really well. And um, a lot of people are hitting me up about bi-monthly bull and cooking without instructions and, and sketches and all that kind of stuff. I've, where I'm at now is I, I realized the reason why... I wasn't being weekly and why I kept promising stuff and then not delivering in terms of the main channel was because I was trying to do everything while I was also doing, you know, new project after new project, like comedy special, radio show, tour, all that kind of stuff. I was trying to do it myself and bring back all of these fucking series that I promised. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like really pull back a little bit, relax, just finish this tour and while I'm doing this tour, I'm only going to do Lou reviews or like talking to camera videos, stuff that's easy for me to shoot and write. Uh, and then when the tour is finished, that's when I'm going to start slowly adding in, I'll add in bi-monthly bull. I think I'm going to pre-film a fuckload of Cooking Without Instructions because they're timeless. They don't have to be like about current events. They're just me being a dickhead in the kitchen. So I think I'm going to pre-film a bunch of those in like a really small period. Like how they do those game shows. They film like fucking 50 of them in two months and then release them over the course of the year. I think I'm going to do that with Cooking Without Instructions so that that way I can just release that rather than making one every week while also trying to keep up with my other series. So I think next year, this year, finish the tour. Next year, slowly start adding in bi-monthly bull, vox pop videos and all that kind of stuff just so I can make myself a nice little sustainable content output um and keep it all rolling and just kind of take advantage of the fact that next year i don't have any big projects well i guess you know i'll have a radio show and a tour and and everything else i'm currently doing but i won't have any big new impossible at the time tasks that i have to learn and, and stay all over the top of i just want to kind of pull back a little bit enjoy what i've done and try and blow up online so i can do it even bigger in the next couple of years um, <clears throat> but, uh, we'll see. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I think guys, how long are we going for here? Is it time for miscellaneous bit at the end? Maybe in a little bit. If I don't have anything else to talk about, I might just do miss bit and, uh, uh, and fucking wrap it up a little bit early here for you cunts. Um, oh, that's what I want to talk about. I, uh, I've been trying to drink a lot of water because... Uh, when I was really sick, I think I got sick because I just wasn't looking after myself. I, Cause I, I do that, man. I'm like, I mean, that's why I'm so fucking skinny because sometimes I work, I get so enthralled in what I'm doing and the work that I'm doing that I literally forget to get hungry. Like I, it's not that I, that I get hungry and then I don't eat. It's like, I literally don't feel it. I'm so absorbed in whatever I'm doing, whether it's writing, editing, filming or whatever the fuck it is. I just, I don't get hungry at all. I don't feel hunger. And I think it's because I used to feel hungry and, but I would just ignore it when I, this is when I was younger, when I was just playing video games and shit, I would get hungry and I'd ignore it. I get hungry, ignore it. I'm like, ah, I'll eat after this. I'll eat after that. And then my body was just like, oh, okay, we, we go through fasting periods and we eat where we can. So annoying this guy with hunger doesn't do anything. We'll eat when we eat. And now if I'm doing something, I don't get hungry. Um, and, uh, and the same would happen with like water and stuff. I wouldn't drink water. And then, and then I, I like when the tour started, uh, because I was trying, I, I was finishing up all the comedy special stuff. And then, and then the, as soon as that finished, the tour began. So like for a good, I don't know, fucking month there, I was doing two things at once and just not eating. And I lost like, I lost like five kilos in about two weeks just from not eating. And, and I was only 70 kilos. So when you're six foot eight and you weigh 65 kilos because you don't, because you're not eating anything, that's bad. That's unhealthy. Like, that's fucked. Uh, I put on weight again because I know how to do it. I'm like, I'm over 70 now. I can't remember what exactly I am, but I, I've got more to go. 
And it's not, it's, don't worry, it's not a body dysmorphia thing or anything like that. It's literally, I get so absorbed in what I'm doing. I just don't eat. <laughs> um, so I've been really putting in an effort <clears throat> to make sure that I'm eating and I'm cooking food and, and, uh, and I'm drinking heaps of water. And I've noticed, man, now that I'm drinking heaps of water, like every, like I have to, to piss now. You, like, I don't mean like right now. I mean that when I need to, I don't. Before, I used to, like, piss, I don't know, in the morning, in the middle of the day, at night. That's it. But now that I'm drinking, like, enough water, a health, a supposedly healthy amount, according to the internet, I need to piss now. Like, every time, there's nothing, and then all of a sudden, hey, I need to piss now. My body just does that? Is that normal? I don't think it's normal. Maybe I'm having too much water because I'll just be doing nothing, feeling nothing, and then all of a sudden, my body will be like, hey man, I need to piss now. And if I don't find a toilet, that's, that's it. I'm, I'm pissing my pants. <laughs> like, I remember I was like, I was walking around the street just today. Like, I just, I got my hair cut and then I left and it had been like two hours, two, three hours since I'd last went to the bathroom. And I'm walking around, I got a coffee, I was drinking it, I got some food, I had that. And I'm walking around just having a nice leisurely day. And then out of nowhere, no warning, my body just goes, hey man, I need to piss now. <laughs> I'm like, well, fuck. And I, I just, I, it's the middle of the day, there's no toilets anywhere. And my body's going, now, I need to piss now. I'm like, well, fuck, I've got to find something. I end up finding a public toilet. But I'm, I'm, now I'm thinking, like, I don't think that's fucking normal. Am I, does that mean I'm having too much water or there's something wrong with my bladder? I can't work it out. I don't know. And it always happens whenever I, like, whenever I go to, whenever I go to gym as well. Like, whenever I start getting physically more fit and better cardio. Luke was telling me that it's normal because he, be, he used to be a runner. Like, it's just like, when your body gets more efficient from physical activity, you're just going to start pissing and shitting more because your body processes stuff faster and you're also drinking and eating a lot more. And I was like, oh, well, that makes sense. So maybe it's just that, but I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll tell you a story. In the warehouse, like, I'm here right now. It's like eight at night, but sometimes I'm here really late just filming or, or posting merch and stuff. Um, by the way, all of the comedy special merch is now in the post. All of it. All the international orders, all of the Australian orders. Pretty much everyone from Australia should be getting their merch this week if they don't have it yet. Um, there's like maybe 20 things that I'm looking at that, that, are, that are sitting there in Australia that I'm posting out tomorrow. But like everything is in the post. Or is going to be in the post tomorrow. I got a bunch of orders sitting there. I'm taking them tomorrow morning. Everything's in the post. International orders, Australian orders, everything except for about 15 orders that have address issues. But I've contacted everyone with that. So everyone's stuff is in the post. So if you don't get your stuff, I don't know. Let's let's leave a. Oh, actually, if you're international, should take two weeks. I don't know. Give it a month to arrive to you. If it's not there by a month. Contact, sorry, contact me. Uh, Australian people, if it's not with you two weeks, three weeks from now, contact me and we'll sort it out. But I, but to the best of my knowledge, everyone's stuff is in the post or will be in the post tomorrow. Um, and everyone's stuff who's not because it's address issues or people gave me the wrong info, you've been contacted. It's only like 20 cunts. And that was a, f man, I'd sent out so much stuff. It was like over a thousand pieces of stuff in like fucking a matter of weeks, which is crazy. What am I talking about? Oh yeah, the warehouse, right. <clears throat> so I'm at the warehouse late and the alarm system has just been installed and nobody here knows how to work it. So how it works is like multiple different warehouses and after five, the alarms activate and everyone has a little key pass thing to... to so, if, so if a door opens without you key passing, uh, the alarm goes off. But the problem is... For me, the toilets are outside my warehouse. So what I need to do is when the alarms are armed, I need to deactivate them, 
open my door, close the door, reactivate them, go to the bathroom, come back, deactivate them, open the door, close the door, reactivate them. It's like a fucking massive fuck around and no one's taught anyone how to do it. And there's like four different people who have to do the same thing as me. So, so often alarms just go off and nobody knows why. Like I'll, I'll open the door, the alarm will go off. The guy next to me will try and turn it off. It doesn't work because I've set it off. And then, and then fucking two weeks later, he'll do the same thing to me. I'll turn it off. It doesn't turn off. It's like, it's a massive fuck around. No one knows how to work it properly. Even the owner is like, I don't know what, what it's doing. They're trying to get the security company in to, to explain it to everybody. Either it's broken or, or no one knows how it, or no one's been taught how to use it properly. Because it's just like scanner codes. It's not like armed off on. There's no words. It's just like literally green light, red light. That's it. So anyway, I'm at the warehouse 11 p.m. at night. And if I want to get out, I got to go, I got to deactivate my alarm, go out the door, reactivate my alarm, go to the gate, unlock the gate, relock the gate, walk down to the toilet, unlock the toilet, come into the toilet, and then do the whole process in reverse to get back in, right? Massive fuck around. So, in the warehouse, 11 p.m., out of nowhere, I need to piss now. <laughs> now. And and uh, and I needed to piss now, right? So I'm like, all right, I got a wee, I got enough time, so... I gotta piss. So I'm like, alright, but I need to piss now. That's like it I needed to go, man. So get my keys out, deactivate the alarm, open the door, alarm goes off. Fuck, right? Close the door, turn the alarm off, then fuck around with it, deactivate it, open the door, it goes off again. Fuck! Close the door, turn off the alarm, and then try and set it. Oh, third time, the alarm just goes off. And then and now I like I, like this has been like five minutes. I need to go now. I gotta piss now, right? So these alarms are going off. I can't get out to go to the bathroom. Otherwise, the whole alarms are gonna go off and the police are gonna be fucking called. While I just because I need to piss, so I can't get out of my own warehouse. I'm I don't know what to do. I need to piss now. There's no toilet anywhere. I pissed in a bottle. I pissed in a bottle. In my own warehouse, like a fucking animal. Like the saddest cunt on planet Earth, pissed in a bottle. I haven't done that in my life ever. Had to do it. Done it twice. <laughs> because of this shit. Man, they never tell you when you start hydrating yourself properly, the side effect of that will mean you'll have to piss in bottles in a warehouse. And then, like, at the time, I didn't have a bin either. I've got one now. But I didn't have a bin either. So I got this bottle of my own piss. Right? I'm like, oh, well, I'll leave it on the shelf. <laughs> I put it on the literary shelf. Just this fucking... I had vitamins too. So it was like ectoplasm piss. It was like bright yellow. Like, you, you ever play Left 4 Dead 2? That fucking bottle of Boomer bile? How it like glowed and it was bright green. Ecto, like Mountain Dew. <laughs> like fucking Mountain Dew, right? I got that, and then I'm like, oh, well, I just guess I'll just leave it there until I finish, and then I finish everything up, and then it's like 20 minutes later, I, I go to leave, and I actually get out of the warehouse without setting off the alarm, and I I take my, my, my warm bottle of my own piss, and I just fucking walk home, and I pour it out along the way outside one of the brothels, and that was probably the lowest point in my life. <laughs> that was when I was like, you know what? Maybe I should just quit. <laughs> it's like, there's a point, I'd, lo I'd love to say that there's a point in every man's life when he's carrying a bottle of his own warm piss home past the brothel district at 11pm when he really starts to think, man, maybe YouTube isn't for me. <laughs> oh, fuck. One day, I'll be in a real studio. Fuck, man. That's so fucked. Um, how are we going? Alright, time for Miscellaneous Be The End. I actually haven't looked at it for, for a little while, so... Uh, Miscellaneous Be The End is the worst part of the podcast. Turn it off now, uh, or you will be forfeiting your life. It's the part of the podcast where I answer questions sent in by you guys. If you would like to send in a question, if you need some life advice, if you uh, want my take on an issue, if you have a funny story you think I would enjoy, 
or a dilemma or a revenge story, particularly if you went too far and you regret it, I would love to hear it. Send an email to podcast at lewspears.com. Um, where are we? Uh, all right. What have we got here? Um, bringing a pocket pussy to school story. Jeez, I love some of these subject lines. Bringing a pocket pussy to school story. Uh, my best friend has spread rumors through my school that we're in a lesbian relationship. (laughs) That's a banger. Uh, exchanging my morals for a threesome. Ooh, got a few different things. I reckon we've had a few ladies comment. So let's do, let's do this one. My best friend spread rumors that we're in a lesbian relation. Oh, that's so huge. Ah, oh. man, can you just fucking send me three paragraphs instead of five? But the subject line's so good. Am I gonna go into this? Ah, oh, I'll go into it. If this story sucks, I'm, I'm, I, won't, I won't do anything. I'll, I'll fucking piss in a bottle. I won't pour it out next time. I'll chuck it at your house. Dude, the brothel, if they, the brothel saw me walking past with a bottle of piss, they would have been like, well, man, we're going to make a fucking lot of money out of this guy. Custom order coming right up. Yeah, can you pour this on me? <laughs> <clears throat> All right. My best friend has spread rumors through my school that we're in a les- lesbian relationship. G'day, Lou. It's me, the girl from episode 106 who vandalized her school toilet so bad. Oh, I love you. So bad they had to be shut down. Yeah, mad cunt. Uh, Keep me anonymous and call me Sarah. Uh, Quick update on the vandalism story. I never got caught and nobody got in trouble for anything. Amazing. Because the teachers had literally no idea who the culprits were. But since then, there's apparently been an infestation of graffiti in the boys' toilets, which I think is funny. Anyway, on to the good stuff. Uh, My best friend Judy has a crush on me and made everyone in our school believe we're in a relationship, even though I literally have a boyfriend. Uh, so it all started the beginning of the year when I came out to Judy as bisexual. Yeah, like every fucking girl in high school. I'm just, I'm not attracted to any gender. I just, I just like girls. Uh, why am I making fun of you? Girls are hot ass. I, I can get around it. Uh, I know it's hard to believe I'm not a lesbian given I'm an avid listener of the podcast. Well, if you had a denim jacket, you definitely would be. Anyway, I cho- I to- anyway, I told Judy I'm bi. I, I sound like some of your fucking classmates. Anyway... I told Judy I'm bi and she was very supportive and told me she's a lesbian. So I guess we bonded over that a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. bit. (laughs) Sorry. I just fucking... I guess we bonded that over a bit. But I wanted to make... (laughs) That's not even funny. Oh, man. I just really... I amused the fuck out of myself then. Um... But I want to make this clear. While I was talking and giving her this whole prepared speech I'd made in my head, I just... I don't even know why that's funny. I just can't... Every time I try and read the email, I just, or I just think, make the sound, make it again. Oh, fuck. Where am I? Oh no, I've lost it. Where the fuck am I? Who cares where I am? That's funnier than anything that's going to be in this email. Oh man. <laughs> I t- <laughs> uh, I, during this whole prepared speech I made in my head, I told her that I... <laughs> I told her... <laughs> I told her that I didn't want... Anything to change between us. I only wanted to stay friends. Nothing more, nothing less. The, the, the way we'd been for literally years. Best friends, sorry. Uh, but she clearly didn't listen. Because over the next few months, she began to become more and more flirty and suggestive around me. It was barely noticeable at first, but then I started catching her doing things like staring at me in class, trying to hug me a lot. Uh, yuck, that happened to me with, with a gay dude in high school as well. Um, he just started like... He started... He hugged... Well, like, too many hugs. Like, that's a fucking warning sign. It's like, this isn't a hug. You're just feeling me up and playing it off as a hug. Fuck off. 
go biddle in <laughs> Oh, I need to sleep. Um, trying to hug me a lot, asking me weird questions about sex, giving me these provocative looks, and touching me a lot for no reason. She even sort of asked me out once. She asked if I wanted to go to this really nice restaurant and then a movie the following weekend, and I said, sure, who else will be there? And she said it would be just us two. I didn't ask if it was a date. Uh-oh, but I decided it would be best to say, sorry, I just remembered I can't go. Then... It would be better to say, sorry, I remembered I can't go, then break her heart or lead her on. Looking back, it probably would have been better if I ripped off the band-aid then and there. Yeah, you're right. It was about a month or so later that I started dating my boyfriend, Joshua. When I told Judy that he asked me out, she went really quiet at first and then started yelling at me because she apparently didn't like him, even though she'd already met him once, and I should have consulted her before I told him I'd go out with him. She then stormed off and didn't talk to me for three whole weeks. I tried to talk to her at blah, 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 ignored me, fucking paragraphs. Two weeks later, she sent me this long text explaining that she had a crush on me and had convinced herself that I had feelings for her too. And when I went on a date with someone else, it destroyed this fantasy she created in her head. She added that even if I didn't love her back, she still wanted to be my friend. I agreed and we started hanging out again. Mistake. Uh, And for a little while, everything was back to normal. You could have bashed this out in about three sentences, man. After a few weeks, Judy started acting weird again, doing the same stuff she'd been she'd been, been doing before. First, I ignored it uh, because I'm stupid, but then it reached a point where she straight up tried to kiss me while we were watching a movie together. Yeah, no good. After that, I decided to sit down with her and ask if she still had a thing for me. She said no. Oh, no, I don't... Nah, I just... Nah, I just want to... Get... <laughs> no, but seriously. Yeah. Sounds like, I don't know, it'd be fucking hard being gay in high school because the dating pool would be, I mean, if not non-existent, very small. Like, ah, well, I can fuck that three, but, you know, just because I'm gay doesn't mean I'm not blind. Um, she said no, but I still explained to her that if she did, I was not interested in her and I had a boyfriend, so nothing can happen between us. She took it surprisingly well, but I could sense she was still hurt. Now the interesting part. Oh, really? After four paragraphs where the only interesting thing was me going... (laughs) Now the interesting... Alright. Now the interesting part. I've lost it. You've written me a fucking essay. This chick definitely doesn't have the Macca's app on her phone because there's so much fucking writing. This is like really grammatically written well. What the... She took... Blah, blah, blah. Uh, now we get to the interesting part, finally. After about a week after this, I left town for two weeks because of family problems that I won't go into. Oh, really? You sure you don't want to write six more paragraphs about that and I'll fucking read it? Uh, I even... This is why I I read stuff before I look at it on the podcast. Um, while I was away, Judy must have been telling everyone we were dating. When I returned, which was only a week ago, I was instantly bombarded with people saying, good for you and asking really inappropriate questions. I suspect Judy told people I would deny being with her because I need to keep it secret from my Christian parents because a few times when I told people I wasn't dating her, they would just wink and say, right. I instantly confronted Judy about the rumors and at first she denied it but gave in after a few minutes. I ignored her for the rest of the week and haven't spoken to her since. I told Joshua about it and his advice was, uh, should we have a threesome? (laughs) Uh, No, that's not what she wrote. His advice... Uh, was to just cut her out of my life. Josh was correct. Clearly, she's not in a good state of mind anymore, and our friendship was only hurting both of us. I know he's probably right, but I wish there was a way we could still be friends, like we used to be. We've literally known each other since we were in grade four, and we've been best friends ever since. I used to be able to talk to her about every anything. I just want, don't want that to go away. My question is, do you think there's a way we can go back to normal without her getting feelings for me again? Or do you agree with Joshua saying that we should part ways and save ourselves the heartache? Thanks for reading my massive email. Fuck, you should be thanking me. Have a shit one. Yeah, look, uh, you... Yeah, fuck her. I mean, don't fuck her. She'd love that. I mean, like, literally fuck her out of your life. It's not worth the stress. You've already given her a chance. She's blown it again. Uh, you were friends with her. Really good friends with her before puberty. And it looks like puberty has turned her into a lesbian love monster. And you don't want to... You don't want that in your fucking life. Um, seems like she's gone through a lot of shit. 
being gay in, in high school and, and, and seemingly not having a viable partner. And, uh, yeah, man. Get out of there. Your, your boyfriend's right. You can find other, other friends. This chick's blown it. She's obviously insane. I mean, she's obviously fucking... I mean, she's touching you inappropriately, asking you sexual stuff, tr- trying to for... She's trying to turn you gay, and you're not... Uh, and she can't handle it, so instead she made up a fantasy in her head and tried to bring that fantasy into real life. Yeah, fuck her. Don't fuck her, but, you know, fuck her. Get her out of your life. Um, go with your gut on this one. She's insane. Alright. Um, where are we? Exchanging my morals for a threesome. Here we go. <clears throat> G'day, cunt. Uh, my name's James. I'm a New Zealander who has moved to the U.S. for college. Man, I already know the accent's going to get him so much pussy. Uh, who's moved to the U.S. for college. Having a foreign accent... <laughs> I knew it! Having a foreign accent here attracts a lot of attention, including the interest of girls. Yeah, man, I remember in high school, uh, an English kid moved from England, and he was like, he was, wasn't was ugly, but he wasn't like incredibly good looking, but he had like the fucking sexy English accent. And all he had to do was walk up to a girl and and just talk, and that was it. And and any and every party, he was just just macking on with with every the hottest girl at every party, just from talking. So that's you know what? that's the one thing I, I wish I did is when I was in high school, I really wanted to do American Exchange, and I never did it. And I really want I I I didn't even ask my parents. I was I just assumed they couldn't afford it, and they probably couldn't because we didn't grow up with money or anything, but I really wanted to do that. Um, having a foreign accent here attracts a lot of, as I just talked, oh man, having an accent really lets you fuck a lot of girls. I should have done that. <laughs> having a foreign accent here attracts a lot of attention, including the interest of girls. While I promised myself not to do anything that would cause conflicts, at the end of last year, I hooked up with someone from my group of friends. Up until now, this has not caused any issues. However, recently, she's been very persistent in taking things further. I don't think this is a great idea, as I'm good friends with several people in her friend group, so I've brushed off every attempt so far. However, a few days ago, she asked if I wanted a threesome with her. Do it! Do it! She asked if I wanted a threesome with her and one of her... Do it! Uh, with her and one of her friends. While this doesn't change my perspective on sleeping with her, having a threesome would be cool as fuck and would make for... Do it! For a great story, as my first time doing that. Side note, the other friend is seriously attractive. Is it worth doing something rare like this in exchange for further breaking my promise or should I give it a pass? I'm pretty conflicted on this. Uh, Cheers, love your work, have an absolute shit one, James. James, do it. Fucking absolutely do it. You will regret it. You, You have moved to a different country for only college. Think about it, man. These people are not gonna be in your life for more than four years. Do it. Hey, man, you know that promise you made? You made that promise. Who did you make that promise to? Yourself. Do it. (laughs) No, seriously, man, you're missing out on life. Do you know know what? I almost had a threesome when when I was single, obviously. I almost had it. I remember. This is what happened. It was when I was first, like, getting big online, first getting a name, and uh, these chicks, two chicks hit me up, started sending me photos of themselves, and they were like, come over now. And I was like, ah, I've got school tomorrow, I've got exams, and I want to do a video tomorrow, ah, I'm going to play it cool, and say no, and go over on the weekend, and then, It'll, the offer will still be open. To this day, it never happened. Biggest regret of my life. <laughs> still to this day, that time I almost got the holy grail. And now I'm in a lovely, loving relationship with an amazing girl. And it's, pro- and it's gone. That lifestyle's gone, man. <laughs> and it, Yeah, do it, man. You'll, you'll fucking regret not doing it. That's what I think. I mean, you haven't. It sounds like you haven't made a promise to anyone else, and it sounds like you know what? She's up for it, and her friend is up for it. So, like, 
I mean, it doesn't sound like there's anything standing in the way other than, oh, what if... Dude, that's what you do in college. You study and then you fuck your mates. That's what you do. Or at least that's what happened in Superbad. <laughs> uh, go for it, man. It sounds like... I don't know. I, I really do think that... End of the day, man, when you're 80 years old on your deathbed, what are you going to be thinking? Man, I'm so glad that I was friends with Stacy for three years and then never saw her again. I'll remember her for the rest of my life, that platonic friend that I had in only college before I moved back to New Zealand. I'll remember that forever. Or will you be thinking, man, I should have fucked Stacy and her mate. That would have been a good story for the boys. And a good memory to think about every time I'm, you know, in a rush and I need to rub one out in the shower. <laughs> Go for it, man. There's like, there's no, I don't know, from what you've told me, it sounds like the only thing standing in front, in, in your way is you being like, oh, but what if? Fuck what if? Do it. <laughs> All right. That's the end of the podcast. <clears throat> Thank you very much for listening, watching, whatever you're doing. Uh, sorry, this one was late. I've been, as you can tell, I've been fucking sick uh, and I'm still recovering and like, you know, I can't, as much as I, as much as I would like to, I'm not a, uh, like to be, I'm not a fucking invincible robot and sometimes I need to rest. Uh, so I will be back in really a couple of days uh, with the Spirit Sunday's podcast. Uh, might be with Greeley if, if uh, might not be, uh, the Greeley will either be next episode or the episode after. Uh, I'm also going to take the podcast camera on tour with me, so I probably won't have this bad boy mic. It'll just be me in a fucking Airbnb somewhere. But that's how you guys are used to it. So uh, thank you very much for listening, watching, whatever you're doing. Give me a rating on iTunes. Support me on Patreon. Grab tickets to Independent Variable. They are on sale now. The tour is well and truly underway. Uh, Brisbane, I am filming it. I really want to sell it out. It's a fucking... It's huge. Like, Brisbane's going to be an amazing show. I can fucking feel it. So please come to Brisbane. If you've seen me before, it's a brand new show, brand new material, and it's, it's some of the most fucked up stuff I've ever written, and it's great. I love it. So thank you. Come Adelaide and Perth this weekend. Tickets available to both shows. Uh, and Brisbane, loosebeers.com slash gigs for all of the tour dates. I think there's like fucking 15 left or something stupid. So come. I will see you there. Uh, and I hope from the bottom of, from the bottom of, <laughs> from the billy, I hope you have a fucking shit one. <laughs>